Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Yoga Gawa's webinar titled Fundamentals of Electrical Power Measurement. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to join us today. I hope you found this seminar helpful and informative. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping issues. The audio part of this seminar can be accessed either through the teleconference number provided in the info tab of your WebEx manager window or through your PC speakers. To hear the audio through your PC, select the communicate tab and join the audio broadcast. This seminar will last approximately one hour. Towards the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A section where, time permitting, our featured speaker, Bill Gavridge, will answer some of the questions received from the audience. If your question is not answered during the presentation, please be assured that we will answer them via email afterwards. All questions can be submitted in the Q&A windows or the chat window located in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Our featured presenter for this event is Bill Gatheridge, Product Manager at Yokogawa. Bill is responsible for the Power Analyzer product line, as well as other measuring instruments. He has over 25 years experience with Yokogawa in the area of precision electrical power measurements. Bill has been teaching various power measurement topics and applications for the past 15 years. He is a member and vice chairman of the ASME PTC 19.6 committee on electrical power measurements for utility power plant performance testing. He is also a member of the RTCA DO160 committee for aircraft power testing and has worked with an ASHRAE committee on variable speed drive testing. Bill has a degree in electrical engineering from Purdue University. Without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Bill. Thank you, uh, Christina, and welcome everyone. Uh, hope you had a good day. And part of uh, uh, our program here at Yokogawa is not only to provide uh, you know measuring solutions, but also education uh, for electrical power measurement. So that's our goal today: is to provide you some education on basic electrical power measurements. Our schedule for our uh, webinar Wednesday's course today: we're covering the fundamentals of electrical power measurements. Uh, two weeks from now, October 29th, uh, we're going to have a webinar on uh, power and harmonic analysis on distorted waveforms. And then the third part, November 12th, will be electric motor and drive testing. So there's our three-part uh, webinar Wednesday series. If you do have questions uh, on any of these topics, please feel free to send them to us at the below, uh, below email. Uh, we'll get you an answer. Uh, that's uh, webinar Wednesdays at us.yokogawa.com. So you can write that down. Uh, be one way of contacting us uh, with your questions if we don't answer them for you. So today we're doing fundamentals of electrical power measurement. What we're going to do is uh, first of all uh, review some basics. We're going to look at uh, power measurement using a uh, precision power analyzer. We'll look at single phase power measurements, uh, current sensors uh, to use for, for these measurements. We'll look at the three phase power measurements. What's a two and a three watt meter method? We'll cover those for you. Then we'll get into power factor measurements, uh, displacement power factor and true power factor. What's the difference? Uh, give you some power factor measurements in single phase and three phase circuits. Cover a couple of practical applications for you. Then we'll look at uh, power measurements using a, a digital oscilloscope. Uh, how to properly use a digital scope to make electrical power measurements, some do's and don'ts. Uh, give you a few measurement examples, comparison of a, uh, a DSO with a power analyzer, and try to answer uh, questions uh, that you may have on electrical power measurement. A little bit about Yokogawa uh, corporate history. Uh, Yokogawa was founded in 1915, so we're coming up to our 100th anniversary next year. Uh, they were the first to sell electric meters in Japan. The uh, North American operation was established in 1957. Uh, today, our worldwide sales are in excess of $4.3 billion. 
and they operate 84 companies worldwide. And those are companies like Okiawa Corporation of America and others around the world. Uh, have over 20,000 employees operating in 33 countries. Uh, I'd like to show a little comparison. Uh, this meter on the uh, left is a moving coil, what's called a moving coil AC uh, voltmeter, 0.2% uh, accuracy class. We think it's about a 1930s vintage. <clears throat> Had a mirrored scale uh, with a pointer on it, so uh, you get uh, very accurate measurements. I think there was uh, as much craftsmanship that went into that wood case as there was the rest of the uh, meter movement because it's uh, really a classy looking instrument. Compare that with our electronic instruments, digitizing instruments that we're using now. So, uh, you know, we've come a long way in the type of uh, instrumentation. This is our uh, facility where we're coming from today, uh, Yokoya Corporation of America uh, in Noonan, Georgia. Uh, where's Noonan? Well, we're just a little bit south and west of Atlanta. So let's get started, uh, part one, with our electrical power measurements. Let's review some basics. I'd like to start with Ohm's law. This is the basis for our measurements. We're talking about watts, power. In its simplest form, this is uh, Ohm's law has to do basically with DC, but it's volts times amps. A couple other relations is the I squared R, uh, and that would be your heat loss sometimes or your voltage squared divided by R, but uh, basically uh, volts times amps for DC. Another part that I'd like to review some terms and uh, conditions that we'll be using um, is the um, average value, half cycle average, the RMS, or peak and peak to peak. Uh, typically, we think about making an RMS measurement. Uh, we hook up a voltmeter, we measure, uh, say, the AC line. Uh, it's an RMS, root mean square RMS measurement. The other part that we use. Um, is, uh, is this average or half cycle uh, average. And that has a relationship, if we uh, know the average value, it has a 1.11 multiplier scaling to get the RMS. Now this had to do with the uh, mechanical moving coil type instruments. They were average responding. And they had a scale, mechanical scale, that uh, was laid out with that 1.11 multiplier. And so we still use that in some of our cases. And of course we know the peak uh, value of, uh, of our uh, signal if we uh, know the RMS value and uh, the peak is for the square root of 2 times that 1.414. So just some relations that we may be using in some of our examples today. Here's the screen uh, <clears throat> display. We had 120 volt RMS uh, voltage. The uh, mean, this is mean scaled to RMS as a 1.11 uh, uh, multiplier. You'll see it's basically 120. Uh, if we look at that half cycle average uh, mean uh, is 108. And so if you multiply that by the 1.11, you should get 120. And then our peak uh, is the peak on that 120 volt RMS. And so you can see the cursors and where they fall on the waveform. Let's look at our electrical power measurements. First of all, what is a watt? Well, it's a unit of power equal to one joule of energy per second. Now you may look at that and say, oh, Bill, I thought you were gonna make this simple for me. What's a, what, what's a joule and energy and all that? <laughs> so, but that's the definition. So in simple terms for the DC source, Ohm's law, remember, our watt, is the volts times the amps. If we go to the AC source, it's the volts times the amps times power factor. And this is very important that we keep this power factor component in there. Now you'll say I use power factor. Sometimes we like to use uh, cosine of the uh, theta or cosine of the angle between voltage and current. That's not always the case, so we use uh, power factor as our actual definition. So, terms that uh, you may see, active power, uh, that's our RMS voltage times the RMS current times the power factor. That's defined as active power. Now, sometimes you may see this as true power or real power, by definition. It's all the same. 
Then we have the apparent power. The apparent power is just the volt amps, or the RMS voltage times the RMS current. In our power analyzers today, they're all electronic, and we use some form of a digitizing technique. We use digitizers, high-resolution digitizers, to convert the analog signal to a digital form. We use the digital signal processing in most of the power analyzers uh, to determine all of our measurement values. Now with a, a digital oscilloscope for power measurements, we use a special firmware to make the true power measurements. Now any type of a digitizing uh, technique and digitizing instrument is uh, what we call somewhat restricted. It is sampled data. So we've got to remember that it is sampled data. But we sample it very fast, but it's still sampled data. Uh, most of our power analyzers and power scopes will apply an FFT, a fast Fourier transform algorithm, uh, for additional power and harmonic analysis. And we're going to get into harmonic analysis in a future webinar. So here's how we do the power calculation. We digitize the incoming voltage and the incoming signal. It's uh, high resolution, high speed digitizers. So we take these instantaneous digitized values of voltage times that instantaneous digitized uh, value of current. And uh, we uh, digitize those, accumulate them over some time period. That's a function of the power analyzer, okay? And then we integrate over some time period multiplied by one over T. Okay, so it's the instantaneous voltage multiplied by the instantaneous current, and then integrated over some time period. That gives us the true power measurement. Here's an example. We got a waveform. We got a sine wave uh, voltage, and we kind of have a chopped up uh, current waveform. Okay, measured the RMS uh, voltage at 118.67 and the current at 0.6376 on this. Okay, so if we multiply those two together, I'm going to get the VA, which is a symbol S, like Sam. Okay, so we'll multiply those together, we get 75.67 VA. Now, if we take that VA, multiply it by what we uh, measure in, as the power factor, 0.9657, okay, we get our true watts at 73.07. And this was on uh, just a little bit lower than our 60 hertz line frequency. And just to show you as an example here, this uh, total harmonic distortion of the current was measured at 18%. Uh, That's this uh, chomp value. So it's not a pure sine wave, but we're able to digitize and follow that, that waveform. So RMS measurements. This is our power. Okay, We digitize the voltage, digitize the current, accumulate them over some time period, integrate that value, multiply by one over T. The RMS, the root mean squared of either voltage or current, okay, we take uh, the voltage, digitize that, and we square it, accumulate that over some time period, integrate that, and multiply by one over T, and then take the square root of either voltage or current. And that's the RMS value of voltage or current. Now these, methods will provide a true power measurement and a true RMS measurement on any type of a waveform. And it includes all the harmonic content up to the bandwidth of our instrument. So these are true power and true RMS measurements by using this technique. So let's make a measurement. Okay, we have some type of a device out here that uh, uh, may be drawing some power. Uh, and so uh, this could be a, a simple um, single phase motor, could be some kind of a load, something, we don't care. It's got uh, you know two wires from the AC source uh, hooked up to the AC line, supplying power to it. We're gonna put our watt meter in, in front of this, okay, at the, uh, at the line coming in. We're gonna measure the current coming in on that line and we're going to measure the voltage from line to line. This is our watt meter. And you'll notice that I've put polarities on here. These are instantaneous polarities, uh, very important. 
uh, that you follow the wiring uh, instructions by the manufacturer of the product. And so we do use some type of an instantaneous uh, polarity marking. If you get these wrong, uh, your watt meter could read negative. And typically in this situation, you want it to read positive because it's power being drawn by this load. So this is a single watt meter method. The voltage and the current detected by this watt meter are that that's being applied directly to the load. And the indication on the watt meter is the power being dissipated by that load. Here's a, a screenshot from one of our instruments. We had an RMS voltage of 120 volts and we're drawing about one amp. And we had 96 watts. But if we look at the VA, voltage times the current is a little over 120 VA. The power factor in this case was uh, just under 0 0.8, 0 0.7998. So if we take that VA 120 times the 0 0.7998, you'll get the power, the wattage of 96. I have one other function here uh, highlighted, and that's crest factor. Now, crest factor is uh, just a ratio of the peak value divided by the RMS value. So on a sine wave, that should be basically close to the square root of 2. And that's what we have here. That's what we've measured. Now, a lot of our instruments uh, can only take so much current. Um, uh, some of them can go up to 0, 050 amps max. Others are a little bit lower. A lot of our applications are going to be a lot higher current. So we're going to need to use some type of a current sensor. We offer a lot of different sensors. Some of them we make, uh, others that uh, you know we work and uh, resell. Uh, we have a line of the uh, clamp arm current transformers that we have selected that are good for power measurement from uh, AEMC. Uh, scope probes, um, use Use the scope probes on the scopes. Uh, not too good to use those with a power analyzer. Uh, a lot of this impedance uh, mismatch uh, from the different type of inputs. So use your scope probe with the scope. This is a current uh, scope probe. Uh, we do make a series of our own uh, current and potential transformers. Uh, this one here has taps on the top for low uh, current measurements from about uh, 10 amps up to 100 amps, and we go through the window up to 1,500 amps. This is a voltage transformer. Uh, pick uh, 3,000 to 6,000 volts, step it down to you know the 120. Uh, shunts, uh, DC shunts, typically for DC current measurement. Uh, here's a, a good transformer used a lot in the lighting industry, high frequency uh, from uh, Pearson Electronics. And then we have a special system that we've developed uh, with LAM, uh, which used to be Dan Physics, uh, if you know that name. It's a very special uh, high accuracy, high frequency uh, DC AC uh, current transformer. It is an active type transformer, so it uses this power supply signal conditioning unit. And this can handle uh, in this box up to uh, six different uh, current transformers. So we could look at a three phase in and a three phase out of a device or just to use three of them for three phase. Uh, but uh, very high accuracy in the 0.05% area and frequencies up into the hundreds of kilohertz. So we have a lot of solutions that we can offer you in the current transformers depending on your application. So just let us know and we can help you out. In selecting a, a current uh, transformer, typically you look at the accuracy. Basically this is, uh, it may say accuracy or it may say uh, CT turns ratio accuracy. The other thing you need to look at since we're measuring power is the phase shift of that uh, transformer. Uh, sometimes uh, if we had say a one or two degree phase shift in the transformer because of the windings, if we take cosine of two degrees, that's an additional 0 0.9994 times your uh, uh, you know, VA reading. Is that acceptable? Sometimes no. Uh, so we can get the uh, you know, phase shift down a lot lower. Obviously, you have to look at the frequency range. If we're looking at DC to line frequency, sine waves, we can use a, a DC shunt. Uh, if you need to measure AC and DC, we have what they call Hall effect type or, or an active type of a CT. Then our uh, basic uh, instrument uh, transformers like the one that uh, we make, this has a frequency response of about 30 hertz and higher. Gives us a five amp output. And so that's a typical what we call instrument transformer. 
some of these outputs are different. Some of them have a millivolt per amp or a milliamp per amp output, or like our instrument transformer is just a, a five amp output. Uh, the impedance or the load that you're hooking on that uh, secondary is very important. Uh, with that loading, how far are you going to run those wires to the instrument, things like that. So you have to be careful, and we can help you out with that if it's a problem. And I said scope probes, they're great. Use them on a scope, uh, not necessarily on a power analyzer. You need to check the specs on those uh, uh, input impedances and uh, how it matches up with the input circuit. The other thing, of course, you got to consider is your physical uh, requirements, the size, connections. Do you want a clamp on? Can you use a donut type where you feed the wire through the, uh, uh, you know, the donut hole? And again, what I talked about, the distance uh, from the load to the instrument. And uh, these are all things that uh, we can help you with if you have questions you need to keep in consideration. Here's a word of caution. It's in red. Never open circuit the secondary side of your current transformer while it's energized. So if you've got current uh, in the conductor going through that, do not open circuit that secondary. It can cause serious damage to the CT. Uh, it could be harmful to, to the equipment and even the operator. So remember, a CT is a current source. Very simple. By Ohm's law, E equals IR. Well, what happens if that R is open circuit becomes very large? The internal voltage inside that CT becomes very high. And so it can saturate the core, uh, it can burn it, uh, cause a lot of problems. So never open circuit that secondary. Uh, some CTs do have a shorting switch on the uh, secondary side. Some of them do not, but uh, just be careful. Okay, we've made our single phase two wire. Let's look at a single phase three wire power measurement. This is like our uh, power utility uh, service we might have in our home for the uh, uh, you know electric uh, ranges, uh, electric dryers, uh, things like that. They're typically marked uh, like a line one, a line two, and a neutral. Okay, so we've got two lines feeding the load. We're going to put a watt meter in each line. Remember our polarities very carefully, as marked by the instruction manual from the uh, from our design engineer. Okay, so we're going to measure the voltage from the line to the neutral, and we're going to measure each of the phase currents. Now, the total power is just going to be the sum of these two watt meters. So we could put two single phase watt meters in in there, and just manually add them up. This is a two watt meter method. So again, the voltage and current detected is that applied directly to the load. And each watt meter shows the power that is being delivered by that line. And the total power is just the algebraic sum of the two watt indications. Here's a, a display. Uh, I had a uh, one line to line voltage, they're, they're 111 volts, both of them pretty equal. But look at here. One current's reading about a little over 20 amps. The other one's reading 22.6 amps, a couple amps higher. That's why we have to measure each line. Okay. Then the total power is going to be the sum of these two. It adds up to 4.8. Uh, our line to line voltage, okay, so 223 in this case. And then our uh, total power was down here. We had a power factor. Uh, look at this. This is interesting. I had a power factor on one line at unity. So that's all resistive. But we had a power factor on the other line at point, uh, 0.99. So there is a difference in the load internally on this uh, device. This is what the waveforms look like. Here's our line to line voltage. Okay. Here's the line to line neutral. And then this is the other line to line neutral. See the 180 degrees on the phase. Here's the currents that we look at, one of them. And then the other one again, 180 degrees on a phase. So it doesn't matter because this voltage and this current go together. You multiply those together, you get a positive value. Now this was actually measured 
on an uh, a, uh, electric dryer. So one side was just the heating elements, the other side had the motor in it, and that's why it had the lower uh, power factor. We're seeing that inductive load. Here's a vector diagram. Uh, again, one side is our uh, you know, resistive load, so voltage and current in phase. The other side had a little bit of phase shift, uh, about eight degrees. That's due to that inductance of, of the motor on one leg. So let's look at uh, Blondell's transformation. Blondell's theory states that the total power is measured with one less watt meter than the number of wires. Think about what we've done so far. With a single phase two wire, we used one watt meter. With my single phase three wire, also sometimes called a split phase, we used the two watt meters, right? Now for a three phase three wire, We've got three wires, so all we need to do to measure total power is use two watt meters. And then our three phase four wire, we're going to use three watt meters. So we think about our three phase system, uh, power utility, uh, we think about these uh, generating the, uh, the voltages 120 degrees apart. And hopefully they're all going to be the same, uh, you know, amplitude, same level. If we look at these uh, phase voltages, again, measured line to neutral, we see a nice symmetrical uh, sine waves 120 degrees apart in our three-phase system. So let's look at a load now. We've got, uh, say, a four-wire system of some type here. Okay, so we're going to look at this at the input coming into this uh, load. We've got our three phases coming in, and we have a neutral. So we're going to measure the voltages line to neutral, say okay, from phase A to neutral, phase B to neutral, and phase C to neutral. Now these voltages typically in our uh, distribution system, the line to neutral voltages are typically 120 or 277. The line to line is going to be higher, but it's going to be you know, like a 208 or 480, and that's where those values come from. Now the line to line voltage measurement is going to be a square root of 3 times the line to neutral value. Now this is for sine wave balance conditions. So let's put our watt meters in. We're going to put a watt meter in each phase. Watt meter ABC. We're going to measure the current. Again, watch your polarities. We're going to measure voltage line to neutral. And watch the polarity on your voltmeter hookups. Watch the polarity on your current hookups. Total power then is going to be just a simple summation of the three watt meter measurements. This is our three watt meter method. The three meters use the fourth wire as a common voltage reference. This is important. They're all referenced to the same point. With this connection, each meter indicates the true phase power. And the total power is just the algebraic sum of the three meters. So basically, it's like three single phase measurements tied together. Four wire systems, pretty simple, pretty easy. Here's an example of my uh, four wire connection. Uh, looking at my currents, each one I had about 22. Uh, well, we had the, 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 the power up here, the phase power is 22 watts. Okay, so we've got the phase currents over here. Uh, each one of them. Um, about 3.36 amps, and we had the uh, voltages uh, down here in this example of the RMS voltages, each of them are in uh, 69 volts. And we can measure the phase power factor on each one. So you get to see all the phase parameters. With a uh, waveform analyzer or waveform display, we can see the voltage and the current phase shift on each of the three phases. So we've got the phase currents, the phase voltages measured line to neutral. We can look at a vector diagram. Some of the power analyzers will provide this for us. And these are the voltage vectors. Current vectors are in here. And we're showing uh, each uh, phase at about uh, 39, uh, just under uh, 40 uh, degrees on each of those phase shifts.
Let's look at a three-phase, three-wire system. This may be more common in our actual industry applications. So I've got some type of a load here uh, with the three wires coming out, phase A, B, C. We can measure the voltages A to B and uh, C to B and A to C. We can look at all, all three of the voltages. But remember, what did Blondell tell us? Total power is measured with one less watt meter than the number of wires. So all we need to do is put in two watt meters. I don't need this third watt meter necessarily to measure total power. So we put in two watt meters, measure the current, watch our polarities again very carefully, as uh, the way the uh, your your manual tells you and the way the engineers designed it. It may not be in accordance with my diagram, so watch what your uh, meter uh, tells you, okay? But we're going to measure line to uh, line voltages and uh, uh, some phase currents uh, with the two watt meters. Now the currents, we measure the phase currents, but the voltages are not phase voltage, they are line to line voltages. Therefore, when we look at the watts reading, it's not a phase watts. We get a reading for watts, but they are not phase watts. And I say this configuration is very non-intuitive. <laughs> uh, it uh, can throw up a lot of questions if you're not familiar with it. We'll show you what happens. So we can look at our display, and if we had three watt meters in there, okay, I'm gonna look at two, two of the watt meters. And in this particular meter, it uh, adds uh, by design uh, number one and number two to get my total. Okay, so there's my total watts, the summation of those two. It does not use the third one, even though it may be hooked up. We can see the VA on each of them. We can see the uh, uh, RMS voltage line to line on each one, pretty well balanced. And we can see the phase current. Okay, phase currents are pretty well balanced. And we've got total power factor. So we get the total power as a sum of two meters. In this case, it's phase one and two. But none of the readings give us a phase power. So what's happening? Well, with this two watt meter uh, technique that um, maybe can cause less confusion is that you would not be expecting a, a, a phase meter, uh, you know, a phase power reading. Uh, if you're using it, uh, it could be less expensive because you don't have to buy, a, you know, a three watt meter method. Uh, however, uh, with our power analyzers on a three phase three wire system, uh, we have a special configuration that we call 3V3A, three voltage, three current wiring. And this is important because it will give a uh, accurate reading uh, of all three. Uh, voltages and all three currents, so we have a accurate power factor and an accurate VA measurement either on a balanced or an unbalanced three-wire system. Now I'll show you what happens. Let's put our three watt meters in there. Again, watching our polarities. I'm going to put this third one back in there. Total power is still measured with a two watt meter method. So here's our three power measurements. We're only using one and two to get the total power. If we look at this, now that we got uh, these uh, fancy power analyzers, we can see a lot of our waveforms. Uh, we may have never seen before. And you hook this thing up and you look at those waveforms and say, well, wait a minute, that, those are not 120 degrees apart. I thought my power company generated about 120 degrees apart. Well, about this time, you may be uh, uh, starting to change your wiring, moving things around, trying to figure out what you did wrong. Uh, here's your phase current. They're all 120 degrees apart. This is not phase voltage. So if you get something like that, that's what you should get. For a balanced system, they're going to be 60 degrees apart for the voltages. Here's what's happening. Um, this is what we call a delta connection. You may have heard of it, probably have, delta connection. And here's, here's what happens. With our delta connection, we got our uh, phases A, B, C, 
and a vector diagram where we're measuring uh, the uh, the voltage is uh, A to B and uh, B to C and C to A. That forms if they're uh, equal amplitudes or delta triangle, and this angle is going to be six degrees apart. I've drawn in the blue lines as just some arbitrary uh, value for the for the current. Now, if this current shifts back up to this red line, so there's no phase shift on the current, then you'll see there's an additional 30 degrees right here between voltage and current. That's why I said it's very non-intuitive, but the power analyzer is uh, designed to uh, take care of all that. So if you see those uh, six degree waveforms, and that's exactly what you should have. Now we do have a delta measurement function in some of our power analyzers where we hook this up uh, with our line-to-line -line voltages. In this example, I had 135 volts line-to-line, -line, and this is a uh, very, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's not a square root of uh, a three to a multiplier, it's actually an a amplitude vector calculation in the uh, uh, CPUs. So this is a, if it's unbalanced, this is a true measurement, okay, of our line to neutral voltage. Here I can get the phase power now on a three wire circuit. This is a three phase, uh, three wire hookup here. My total power was 20.49. If we add these three up from our calculation, I get the same, 20.49. And we also get a measurement of uh, some circulating neutral current down here that may be occurring also. So a handy measurement with this delta measurement on a three phase three wire application. Now if you take the device, okay, same device, hook it up as three phase three wire power measurement or three phase four wire. It's the same device, uh, just one of them we're measuring line to neutral voltages, and uh, this is measuring line to line. The power's got to it's, it's got to be the same, and it will measure the same: 40.87, 40.89. Okay, it's the same power factor. Okay, so we do get the same power. It has to be that device is still drawing the same amount of power. Let's look at power factor measurements. So, if power factor, like we've heard in school and things like that, if power factor is the cosine of the angle between voltage and current, then how do we measure power factor on a three-phase circuit? Well, our circuits usually have some components of a resistor, capacitor, inductor, and some series parallel combination. Okay. So here I've just put them all in parallel, but there's usually some configuration of series parallel of these three components. Remember uh, saying that current lags voltage in an inductor. So if we had a motor, typically inductive load, uh, the uh, the current is going to lag the voltage in time. Okay, so here we have a uh, we use G for for lag. We're lagging 44.77 degrees. So 44.77 uh, degrees cosine of that angle 0 0.70994, and we uh, calculated here in the power analyzer 0 0.70995. Okay, basically the same. Then a current leads a voltage in a capacitor. So again, I had my uh, D for uh, lead at 45.09, cosine of 40.09, 45.09 is 0 0.70599, and uh, here we measured uh, this a little bit different, uh, 0 0.706, okay? Rounded off a little bit. But basically the same, okay? So some real world examples, uh, inductive load, uh, most common, what's an AC motor. That's where our current lags the voltage. Uh, here's a pretty common example anymore of a, a capacitive load with our compact fluorescent lamps with the ballast built into it. Uh, it's a, a capacitive load and the current is leading the voltage. Now it's kind of hard to see that, but uh, it is leading in there. Of course, this is lagging. So if we look at a uh, you know waveform like this, and if we say power factor's got to be cosine of the angle between voltage and current, well, 
we usually get that angle from the zero crossing and say, well, where's the zero crossing on this? Uh, everybody here is going to have a different answer. Do we try to measure the peaks? Do we try to measure this uh, zero crossing here? Uh, can't do it. Can't do it on something like this. So, for a sine wave, where we can get the uh, zero crossing to get that, uh, you know, angle time delay. So, for a sine wave only, power factor is cosine of theta, or the cosine of the angle between voltage and current. This is defined as displacement power factor. So if you work in power utilities, this is, of course, what you use because uh, you don't have distorted waveforms. You're generating good, clean sine waves, and we can take that uh, cosine of theta. But in most of our electronic uh, world and uh, devices that we have now, we don't have clean sine waves. So for all other waveforms, we say power factor is watts divided by VA. And this is defined as true power factor. Works on any type of waveform, sine wave or distorted waveform. It's our watts divided by VA. So a little, little math uh, where it comes from with a phasor diagram for an RL circuit. Uh, I'm using an L, so inductive circuit. By convention, the bars uh, are drawn vertically. Uh, this is the volt amps on the uh, hypotenuse of the triangle and watts on the base. Okay, so with our trig functions, uh, the power factor is the uh, watts divided by the VA, based, uh, the, the base of the triangle divided by hypotenuse. And that gives us our power factor. So as a measurement example, here I had 87 uh, watts on a probably a power supply input, and VA uh, measured 113.7. Uh, this power meter calculated data 0.76651. Uh, if we take these two values, mathematically divide them, we come out with the same. So this was a power supply with a uh, you know, switching capacitive type input. So if we look at the uh, displacement power factor now, the angle between the voltage and the current, so I used my vector diagram. So I got 21 uh, degree phase shift right here. So the power factor is cosine 21.06 is 0.9332. Now if we take our watts divided by the VA, we measured the watts over here at 48.16, the VA at 51.61, and we come out with 0.9332, exactly the same. Okay. So this is on a sine wave using the uh, displacement power factor. So with a three-phase uh, power factor on a three-phase uh, system with a three-phase four-wire system, remember, uh, you know, our power factor is total watts divided by total VA. So mathematically, it's the three watt meter uh, readings added up divided by the three VA readings added up. So it gives us uh, total watts divided by total VA. Four-wire system is pretty simple. Now, if we use the two watt meter method, we got, again, watts divided by VA. Remember, it's two watt meter methods, so it's watt one plus watt two to get my total watts. And my total VA now is uh, VA one plus VA two, and this is times square root of three divided by two because it's a line to line measurement divided by two to get the average of the two. Now, if the load's unbalanced, say so we have different currents. This could be an in, in improper uh, measurement here because we're only looking at two of the VAs. So the VA could be wrong and that could throw off our power factor if it's unbalanced on our three wire system. So by using the three watt meter method, again, our 3V3A method, we look at all three of the VAs. This is what was important about that measurement is now that if these currents are not equal, we take all of them into consideration to get the total VA. And so the total VA, again, is square root, divided by, square root of three divided by three. So we're gonna average the three of them. And it's still the two watt meter method. So this will work if it's balanced or unbalanced on your three wire system. So it's very important. And that's why we use this special wiring method and calculation method. So with the three V3A method, uh, I got my total uh, power 
Okay. Uh, or here, here's my total power, 49.466. And my VA was the 93.060 down here. So the watch divided by the VA, 0.53155. And that's what we had here. Now you see, uh, I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier. For power factor, we use the symbol lambda. That's not Yokogawa's doing. That's an international symbol. If you're not familiar with it, that uh, has been uh, standardized on for power factor. Let's look at a couple applications here. Um, let's look at uh, some. Standby power and energy star measurements and the um, IEC 62301 testing. Uh, we do a lot of this, uh, you know, standby power in our uh, products, energy star. These are international standards. The IEC 62301 has been adopted internationally. Really ha has to do with uh, household electrical appliances and the measurement of our standby power in the idle mode, like our TV. Uh, you know, we turn it off, it's really not off. It's in that standby mode, waiting to hit that power button again. Uh, so it's a hardware and a software measurement solution. So this standard specifies the methods of electrical power uh, measurement. Now it has uh, counted 25 uh, different uh, standards for various household appliances. This defines the standards for something like a dishwasher, a refrigerator, uh, you know, laundry, uh, you know, TVs, stereos. Uh, all all those different ones are defined by this standard with these 25 different uh, uh, test methods. It also defines uh, such uh, items not only as power, but as THD or total harmonic distortion. And we're going to get into harmonics a little bit later, but you do have to measure total harmonic distortion in this. So uh, in the U.S., uh, North America and Energy Star uh, typically is using these testing limits uh, from the IEC standard. They have uh, worked together on that. So what's a standby power? Uh, uh, mode, well, it's where we have an instantaneous power. It's turning off and on, maybe. Uh, this could be a, an example of a like a laser copy pr uh, printer, something like that, where you have heaters and they're always cycling off and on and, uh, you know, very hard to read. And so how do we, how do we read that, uh, you know, pulsed uh, power? And uh, get an average power is what we're trying to do. So our standby power measurement uh, mode uh, uses the uh, energy uh, divided by the time, or we measure watt hours and then divide out the time. And this is what we call average active power. So when we have a fluctuating power measurement like that, hard to measure. We use this average active power measurement mode. Uh, it's the preferred method when you look at the standard. Works on both steady and uh, fluctuating type power sources. It's the most accurate method. And we pioneered this method way back in the year 2000 with a, one of our previous uh, power analyzers. Some other applications, uh, efficiency measurements. Of course, efficiency is calculated uh, very simply as output power divided by input power, usually expressed as a percentage. Um, now you can use, uh, you know, two power meters and divide the input and the output. Uh, you calculate the uh, efficiency from these readings. That's the two uh, meters. Now, the problem with this is that when you're looking at those readings, they may not be, the data may not be made simultaneously. So you could have a possible error due to this time skew. Uh, so things are not exactly a steady state. So the uh, best way to do that is to use a multi-element power analyzer uh, to measure the input and output uh, power simultaneously. And then we can do that calculation, uh, you know, as a, you know, in a single power analyzer, and eliminates eliminates any error due to this time skew. That's the best way to do your efficiency uh, measurements. We have uh, this is a sample of an internal uh, setup inside the power analyzer uh, where we're measuring efficiency. Of, uh, this is a three phase out and a single phase in. So we're actually measuring that output and input power. 
Then we can display it um, as our output power here at 30.8. Uh, the input power is 54, and we can actually uh, display this um, efficiency as a percent, and we can calculate the uh, device loss. So there's some of the things that we can do for you. Uh, startup analysis, sometimes pretty important. Uh, we have some uh, types of power analyzers that can actually trigger on waveforms and give you this uh, startup, uh, measure cycle by cycle power, and uh, do some uh, things like that for you. Let's look at uh, using a scope for power measurement. Uh, we like to use our scopes. Why do we use an electrical power? Uh, uh, why do we use a scope for electrical power measurements? I say because we have a good comfort level using our oscilloscope. Uh, we've got ded dedicated probes. They're easy to use on the connections. Uh, we can have some scopes have a power uh, analysis math capabilities. Uh, we do have high bandwidth capability within the scope and some of the probes, and uh, we get to see the waveforms, and we can see a harmonic analysis with a simple FFT function that's uh, in the scopes uh, also a lot of times. So we have a lot of comfort level, I think, using the scope, and that's why we like to use it. However, special note, when you're using your scope, remember, AC power is not just connecting a voltage probe to say channel one and a current probe to channel two and using the internal math to multiply the two of them together. What's that give you? Well, it gives you VA, okay? Multiplying two of them together. It's not watts. So you have to have a power analyzer that has uh, power algorithms uh, inside because remember it's volts times amps times power factor. So somehow we got to get that power factor. So we go back to the firmware having this algorithm in it. Okay, where we're taking the digitized values of voltage and current, uh, accumulate them together, integrate them over a time period, multiply by one over T. So this algorithm then is actually built into the firmware. Let's compare a DSO with a power analyzer. Uh, bandwidth, uh, power analyzers right now, we can say we're up around two megahertz. Uh, with a DSO, uh, depending on their probes, uh, but typically with probes, we can go DC to uh, 50 megahertz. We may have scopes, of course, that are in the 500 megahertz to gigahertz. It is uh, limited by what we can do with the probes. Accuracy, this is very important. These are with the power analyzer, 0.1 to 0.02. It is a calibrated, traceable measurement system. Uh, a word of caution with your scope. Uh, look at your accuracy specified on the scope. It's specified as a DC accuracy. Uh, then you have to uh, calculate in your uh, probe accuracy. Uh, I say we might be able to come up with someplace around at the best around three and a half percent, something like that. Um, unfortunately, the accuracy, power accuracy for a scope is really undefined uh, because the scope accuracy is only done at DC. Uh, but going on uh, with the ranges, uh, on the power analyzer, we've got uh, high voltage and high current ranges, uh, direct connection, uh, positive side with the scope. We can use uh, probes for you know small currents, uh, probing, uh, very effective. Uh, with the power analyzer, we've got a 16-bit digitizer, high resolution, 65,000 levels against 256 levels for the vertical resolution on your scope. So there's the differences you have to be concerned with. Another thing we have to be concerned with is what we call the skew between the two probes, between the voltage probe and the current probe. And this is a, a time skew uh, based on the leads of the two different uh, devices. So if we look at this, we zoom it, you can see there's a time delay between the voltage and the current. And this is uh, actually can cause additional errors. So we have to use a de-skew calibration uh, on your scope to adjust those together to eliminate this time shift. So uh, after the de-skew, you can see we've got both of these uh, you know, uh, right on top of each other. So there is no time delay between the two. Typical power measurements we like to do with our scope are uh, you know, board level, uh, where we can easily probe the board and the components, look at switching losses on components, uh, you know, the actual device power consumptions, uh, you know, noise levels, 
Uh, we can do harmonics uh, with simple FFTs. Uh, we got our waveforms. That's uh, always nice to see. We can look at uh, triggers for the inrush and transients. So all these things are uh, positives for using the scope. Here's a power supply measurement we did with the power analyzer. So we had a, a, a pulse current type uh, on the power supply with our pretty, kind of distorted uh, voltage. So we measured RMS voltage and current. And we got the power and we got the power factor on, on this. Then we use a uh, scope doing the same thing, same same load, same power supply, a little bit different display. So we enter voltage and our current and the pulse power, of course, that we're getting from the current. We get our data down here. Okay. So if we compare these, uh, here, here's a comparison that we had. A little bit of difference between the power analyzer and the scope. Okay, differences between the, uh, the probes and uh, you know just the uh, accuracy of, of the measurement. So uh, uh, these are things you need to be, uh, you know, take into consideration. Uh, the power analyzer is going to be a, a calibrated traceable measurement. This is going to be what we call a reference measurement. So what you're going to need if you use a scope uh, for your power measurement, uh, of course, you need the scope. Uh, you need your uh, uh, probes, differential voltage probes particularly, uh, current probes, uh, high voltage probes. Uh, you need isolation uh, for non-isolated uh, you know, designs and uh, your D-SKU device. And of course, you have to have a scope with the power uh, analysis firmware. So in conclusion, I uh, hope we've uh, helped you with your um, uh, better understanding of your electrical power measurements. So uh, we started with review of some of the very basics. Um, looked at the power measurements uh, using the uh, precision power analyzer, and then also with the digital scope. Uh, we looked at single phase, looked at some current sensors, looked at the three phase, remember the two and three watt meter method. Then we got into power factor measurements, the displacement power factor and true power factor and the difference between them. Gave you a couple examples of single phase and three phase measurements and a couple of practical applications. Then we talked about using our uh, digital oscilloscope, how to properly use it, and uh, the DSKU operation, and the examples on the power supply, and the comparison between the DSO and the power analyzer. So hopefully we've answered these questions for you on uh, electrical power measurements. Uh, you know, we, we offer a complete line of power analyzers to meet your application, your budget. Uh, we have our product application software support provided uh, also with our field sales reps, factory regional sales managers. They're there to help you if you have questions. Uh, with the um, power analyzer, one of the key things is we give you a guaranteed measurement accuracy over the bandwidth of the instrument. We have available NIST traceable and ISO 17025 calibration, and these are all done by our factory here in Noonan, Georgia. And all of our power analyzers are covered by a three-year warranty. So we got, like I said, a complete line of power analyzers, uh, scopes with power analysis, uh, the handheld portable test instruments, uh, if you're measuring power and power quality uh, issues, things like that, uh, along with the uh, panel switchboard analog meters to uh, measure power, uh, even the, uh, the power transducers. And then the multifunction uh, digital meters, all again measuring power for different applications. And uh, some of the good old analog, uh, you know, portable instruments for uh, VA and watts with the uh, moving coil and the mirrored scale, uh, you know, good simple solution. Future webinars coming up. We do a lot of webinars, so you can see us on our website at tmi.yokogawa.com. Then you can go to our technical library, and uh, webinars are on demand. Coming up. With our webinar Wednesday series, of course, we just did our basic power measurements today. In two weeks, we'll do the harmonic analysis on October 29th, and these will be at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Then on November 12th, we'll do the motor analysis, motor and drives. Plus, in between, we do have webinars, watch for it, on the digital oscilloscope applications and solutions. 
So again, you can see us at our website, tmi.yokogawa.com, at our technical library. A couple other conferences coming up in January. Come on down and see us in Orlando. Uh, we'll be at the uh, uh, Motors and Drives Conference, and we'll be doing a pre-conference workshop uh, on January 20th uh, on motor testing, motor and drive testing. And you can uh, look at this and register at uh, edriveonline.com. Another big show uh, in uh, you know power and uh, electronic measurements and things like that is APEC, Applied Power Electronics Conference. And this is going to be March 15th to 19th in Charlotte, North Carolina. So a couple opportunities to uh, you know come on down south here and visit us at a couple shows. So again, thank you for attending. And if you have any questions, uh, be sure and uh, you know send us an email or get in touch with us, and we will sure try to help you out. I'm going to let uh, Christina wrap it up now. All right, thank you, Bill, for your good, your wonderful presentation. We have run out of time for our Q and A section, unfortunately, but please be assured that we have taken up all of the questions, and they will be answered via email. And with that, I'd like to once again thank you all for attending and participating in our online webinar. Thank you again, and we hope to see you online at our future webinars.